Hi, it's Wrangler back with more retro computing fun, this time on the Commodore Amiga, and specifically the Commodore Amiga with the digital signal processing chip, the DSP chip on it. I have some more software for you if you have one of these machines. But just before diving into that software, let me just explain about the DSP chip. Hopefully you've seen my previous videos on the subject where I've written various software for this chip and the motherboard that supports it. But if you haven't, here is the backstory. No Amiga was ever produced that had a DSP chip on it. Uh, however, there were prototypes in Commodore for a machine with a DSP and the idea there was to replace uh, the A3000 once it came to the end of its commercial life with a new machine that was codenamed the AA3000. It had this DSP chip in it and the AGA chipset and would have been the machine to come after the A3000. Instead of which Commodore management axed that project and we got the cut down A4000 instead, a machine that really never should have been. Anyway, why the DSP chip? Well, the fact was that that had super FPU calculation performance compared to the CPUs of the time. Now, as I say, no production machine ever uh, came out with the DSP chip. So why are we talking about it now? Well, actually, much more recently, a, uh, an enthusiast of the Amiga called Hesse uh, recreated the original prototype motherboard and named it the AA3000 Plus which does have the DSP chip on it and that's what's in this machine that we're looking at here it behaves just like an Amiga 4000 but in the uh, case of an Amiga 3000 and it has this DSP chip in it which could do 3D demos and the various other software that I've written. Right, that's the backstory. What are we talking about here today? Well, let's get rid of that demo for the time being. I want to show you something else that I've written. And uh, what it does is runs very simply. What you do is D run DSP meter and that just sets up a background process for me on the on its own doesn't do a great deal and you might wonder what all the fuss is about well the thing about it is that it integrates with the rather excellent new meter from thomas rapp now quite possibly you are fully familiar with all of this if you have been using or amiga quite a bit but just while that's starting up let me explain about new meter and that produces this rather colorful uh, set of uh, uh, bars up here on my workbench screen that is telling me all sorts of live information about my Amiga. So top bar here is my CPU usage. Then I've got various bars for the RAM and then some temperature gauges and voltage gauges, just simply because that's what I've got uh, added into this Amiga that we're looking at. And at the bottom here, some usage gauges for my uh, my hard disks, my partitions. Now, what DSP meter has done is to add a new gauge here for the DSP usage. And that's what the uh, DSP meter adds. And we'll be looking at that in a little bit more detail. Just before we dive into that, um, perhaps one thing to mention here is this is a machine that is running natively on the motherboard CPU. Uh, there we go, a 68030 with a 6882 FPU. Um, why am I mentioning that? Well, what you can see from this usage chart right at the top here is if I do absolutely nothing here, the CPU usage is running into the 60s or possibly 70s. Uh, the CPU is working pretty hard even when the machine's doing absolutely nothing. We'll come back to the significance of that as we go on. But having run DSP meter, is that the only thing you need to do to set up? No, you need to do the integration into new meter. And the way to do that is to go in, click once on the new meter icon and go into icon information. And then when the window pops up here onto the icon tab, 
let's just make that bigger so we can see everything so these are the settings that are set up as icon tool types in new meter these are all the standard ones i haven't touched any of that uh, and you could play around with these to your heart's content to uh, change the position of this meter and the colors of the bars etc completely customize it for you but what i have done is add in a new row here which adds in a custom gauge uh, which is adding in this dsp line so what it's doing is connecting to dsp meter and showing it showing the value that's coming out of dsp meter as a percentage well it's zero at the moment yeah absolutely right because we're not running any software so um you know you could do this for yourself run dsp meter add in this line into the tool types and you'll get the bar added into your new meter cancel all of that that's all very well let's see it working so uh, let's do this by using mandelbrot's and have a look at that uh, so there's the classic Mandelbrot let's make that a bit bigger so we can see what's going on now when you first run uh, Mandel DSP it uses the CPU and perhaps more specifically the onboard FPU to calculate the Mandelbrot picture. And that's why the uh, CPU usage here is completely maxing out because the CPU is doing everything it can just simply to draw this picture and keep my mouse pointer updated. So that's FPU. Um, if we just hit, oh, there we go, FPU took 28 seconds. If we um, hit D on the keyboard, that switches over to the DSP to do the calculations. And you see it's a lot quicker there than this 030. 9.38 seconds. But what you also saw, hopefully, was the meter here beginning to show some DSP usage. But let's zoom in a bit. Um, now, what you see is on this 030-based uh, machine, DSP, yeah, it's doing quite a bit of work to draw the Mandelbrot, but actually it's the CPU that's maxing out here and is what is taking the time to draw the overall image um, is actually the time the CPU takes to color all the pixels on the screen. Uh, it's only really when you zoom right in and have a lot of these black sections that the DSP starts getting uh, more usage. In other words, Mandelbrot here is CPU bound on the uh, 68030 and not DSP bound. If you whack in an accelerator, it might be different for you. So that's Mandelbrot's. Um, I have also upgraded the versions of the What Might Have Been demo that we were looking at at the start to use the DSP meter. And the MP3 decoder that I wrote for the DSP also upgraded to use DSP meter. Now, for Mandelbrot and for the What Might Have Been demo, you are, of course, going to have to run in a window here so that you can actually see DSP meter operating at the same time. Uh, if you run the Mandelbrot or the demo in a native Amiga screen, of course, that's all you're going to see is the Mandelbrot or the demo. You're not going to see DSP meter but it will be running in the background. Now, what you find when you run these things is Mandelbrot on an 030 is limited by the CPU, as I was pointing out before. Uh, the What Might Have Been demo actually is the other way around and is limited by the CPU, and that's because the CPU is fully occupied doing chun chunky planar conversion. And in fact, every time New Meter wants to update the gauges, which is about once a second, uh, it has to break in to do those calculations and that causes the demo to stutter. If you put it in an accelerator, it will fix that problem. Then onto the uh, MP3 decoder, that is fully occupying the DSP. It's limited currently by the speed of the DSP, not the CPU, it's the other way around. Um, and I will be using DSP meter to help me optimize the MP3 decoder further because you get a visual indication of exactly how hard the DSP is working. Shout out here, by the way, I should give to Trickster, uh, a mate of mine who suggested to me the idea of adding in a meter to new meter for the DSP so we could see what's going on. 
Cheers to you, Trickster, if you're listening. And the other thing that's probably on your mind is, well, where do I get DSP meter so I can use it myself? Well, the answer to that is by the time this video is out, I will almost certainly have put it on Aminet where you could download it, make the adjustments to the new meter tool types and off you go. You will, however, need the latest versions of all three of the programs that I'm talking about here, Mandel DSP, the What Might Have Been demo, and the MP3, MP2 decoder. The, um, I've updated them all to take advantage of DSP meter, and the versions you need are the ones showing on the screen or later versions. Uh, earlier versions don't support DSP meter. And equally, if I write any new software for the DSP in the future, it's highly likely I'll include DSP meter support. Just a quick mention here, if you do want to support me in everything that I'm doing for the Amiga with the DSP chip, or just generally for retro computing, then do consider using my Kofi link, which is in the description of this video. And a big, big shout out and thank you to everyone who's supported me so far. It really does provide me with a boost in those dark hours when I can't get software to work properly. Thank you for your support. That's all for this time. Hope you've enjoyed it. Join me again next time. Bye.